Netflix killed The Witcher. What a surprise. On the morning of October 30th, 2022, fans of the hit TV series The Witcher were hit with devastating news. Yep. Henry Cavill revealed that he will no longer play Geralt of Rivia, the show's main protagonist, after the conclusion of season three. A heartbreaking turn of events, one that has bred incredible bitterness towards the show, and of course the writers. This is a fucking tragedy, and genuinely unexpected. I think it's unexpected, but I bet if you read the books in The Witcher and you compared it to the show and you knew that Henry Cavill was a huge fan of the books, I feel like it wouldn't be that unexpected, right? Yeah, I feel like that would that would add a lot of insight into it. Losing Cavill has obviously brought into question where the fans of the show would even continue to watch after the replacement, Liam Hemsworth, takes over the role. In all honesty, I don't know if I'll still be able to watch the show knowing Henry won't be a part of it anymore. But why exactly did this happen? What could make a production kick out the lead? Not just the lead, well, but- I, I mean, how did he get kicked out? I mean, I didn't hear he got kicked out. Massive actor who fans praised as being the perfect fit for the role. Yeah. And of course, is this the end of The Witcher? And keep in mind, by the way, whenever Henry Cavill originally got cast for the role, there was a little bit of uh, people like, I don't know if this is really the right guy. It was. But there were a lot of people that felt that way. I have been a fan of the fantasy genre since I was a boy and played The Witcher games. I played The Witcher 3 through twice. And I just wanted to make sure that Geralt was represented. I still need to play that. Uh, I never finished it. Possible. Henry William Cavill has a career that spans over two decades, rising to prominence first in the highly acclaimed film adaption of The Count of Monte Cristo in 2002. Dude, and I remember that. Dude, I, what the fuck? I don't know. Did I watch that with my dad in movie theaters or did we watch it on VHS? I don't remember, but it was one or the other. Speeding through the industry to roles like the Man of Steel himself. Yeah. At this stage, he's an incredibly in-demand actor, but that doesn't tell the whole story as to why fans of The Witcher love him so much. Henry is a nerd at heart, not yeah. one posing for brownie points, but truly into the culture. Well, the first time I got the call, I actually missed it. I was... <laughs> I was playing World of Warcraft at the time, and... <laughs> I had my priorities straight. <laughs> he plays RPGs, loves yep. World of Warcraft, paints miniatures like Warhammer, builds his own gaming PCs, and grew up doing what most of the fans of comic book movies or video game adaptions have been doing. Despite looking like the epitome of a Giga Chad, Henry Cavill was seen as one of the audience when it came to loving some of the characters and franchises he would later well, go on. I think it's also because he wanted to, like, there's and this is like a big thing it's not as much of a thing now because it's like kind of it's been established but like especially whenever the witcher was first coming out there was like a very big topic of demonizing the audience because there are decisions that were being made for a different type of show that were these were clearly politically correct decisions being made and things being omitted or added for diversity reasons etc and then fans being vilified for not liking it and I, I think that Henry Cavill was one of the people that defended that. And he said, like, listen, like the fans have a right to want something to be true to its form. They, they want something to be a faithful reproduction rather than somebody co-opting it to push their worldview. So I think also like there was a lot of it wasn't just like one thing. It was like five different things combined. The star in which of course makes him a perfect fit for some of these roles, yeah. as he's also a fan, so he's more likely to do it justice. Yeah, so do you correct people? Um, I don't necessarily... <laughs> <laughs> I, I am effusive about getting the... Uh, being, being loyal to the source material, let's put it that way. Okay. Despite this, Henry's initial casting as the White Wolf was met with much criticism. After yeah, all, was. Henry looks nothing like Geralt. Geralt is a rugged man. Henry is handsome. Yeah. Many fans questioned the casting decision based solely on this fact. Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, that, that's who I thought. I was about to say, like, that's who I thought probably should have played Geralt if you're going just for looks. Definitely. Nikolai Costa Wildow, maybe. But Henry Cavill? Ugh, no thanks. Pass. The sentiment on social media was that of skepticism for his ability to take on the role of Geralt. But yeah. the woman in charge of the project had a different perspective entirely, 
and it wasn't based on looks but on passion. He was my first meeting. I didn't have writers or scripts yet, just a green light and a lot of passion. That was four months ago and I've never forgotten the passion he brought. He is Geralt, he always has been. I'm so thrilled to welcome Henry Cavill to the hashtag Witcher family. And she was right. But why exactly was she so adamant that Henry was the right man for the job? Well, it comes down to persistence. His love for the Witcher video game series yep. led him to do everything in his power to try and get this job. Mm -hmm. He constantly called his agents and forced them to call the showrunners over and over and over there again. There it is. Eventually, it worked. He got the meeting. <laughs> Fuck yeah, before man. the script had been written, and he before the job. was even a thought. The seed was planted, and he made a lasting impression. He did that because he knew this role was perfect for him, that he would do it justice as a true fan of the material it was based upon. This turned out to probably be the best decision of the entire production. While fans started out skeptical about his ability to deliver mm -hmm. a believable Geralt, his presentation was perfect. He embodied the character on screen, but most importantly, yeah, the best other example I had is that people said the same thing about Heath Ledger being the Joker back in the day. Because the movie that he did right before the Joker was Brokeback Mountain. So they're like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? They did? Yeah, man. Absolutely. He respected the story too much to compromise, giving fans the assurance that this show would be different than those of the past. A rational concern for gaming and book fans when seeing a media adaption. It's easier to name the ones that have been done well than it is to name the failures, as there are few and far between. The video games especially carry with them a terrible, terrible track record of television shows or movies butchering the initial source material, creating a slap in the face to the original fans, marketing themselves to a fan base. Well, I mean, back in the day, the reason why video, like, movies about video games were bad were just because they just sucked. They were just fucking garbage, period. There wasn't, like, any sort of agenda with it. Yeah, they were just budget shit movies. Play doesn't exist. Writers and producers, without respect for the original work, thinking they know Evil better and trying to use the media as a vehicle to tell their own stories instead of the ones fans come to expect and, and already love. The Witcher Season 1 was of course far from perfect, but one thing fans could agree upon is that Henry Cavill was doing the role justice. Mm -hmm. Even if the story deviated a tolerable amount, he was going to carry the show the whole time, no matter what. Unfortunately, things behind the scenes were starting to go wrong. There were decisions being made that would put everything at Yellow. risk, decisions yeah. that might even kill the entire show. During the filming of Season 2, it became clear that lines were being drawn in the sand. Working conditions were becoming difficult, with constant conflict. Season 2 released, and fans noticed this on screen. Be I feel like this is so problematic that there are these like massive discrepancies between critics and fan reviews. Why does this happen? People who had played the video games, but more importantly the people who had read Sapkowski's books, were becoming more and more disillusioned with the direction. The shift of narrative was clear, things were not really making sense. The source material was being disrespected or outright ignored. Well, and the it's also like, did, did, weren't they saying that like Geralt wasn't even going to be the main character soon? Like, hold up. Hold up. Wait, wait. What's this show called again? Numbers, however, the people viewing were still good, which allowed for a season uh -huh. three green light from Netflix and the ability to perhaps steer the ship to safer waters if, of course, fan input was heard. Unfortunately, during production of season three, Henry Cavill took to social media and announced his departure from the project. From the outside, this seemed incredibly out of the blue. After yeah. all, why would a man who fought tooth and nail to get himself cast in this role give it up when the show was you going- You imagine like how disappointing that must be too, right? It's like you really want the role, you like grow up reading the books, loving the games, and then like you finally get the role and you have these fucking clowns that are ruining the show and it's just like finally you're like I, this is making me this is ruining my life i need to leave it, that's like that's so awful to continue on without him how could he do that to himself to the show and to the fans who saw him as Geralt and entirely irreplaceable. Immediately, the internet rumor mills came to life and theories mm -hmm. were being tossed around as to oh, why yeah, i made a number of videos about this this happened 
One common speculation at the time was that due to DC's push to compete with Marvel, yeah, Henry's much more important and lucrative He's role be, as Superman, uh, Superman was going to limit the time available to act on the Witcher series. Yeah. That he'd simply made the choice to give up the role of his dreams on a show he seemed so passionate about in order to continue playing the Man of Steel. Right. But did sure. Superman really kill the Witcher? I wanted to make it official that I am back as Superman. And the image you see on this post and what you saw in Black Adam are just a very small taste. And then that didn't happen for some reason? This theory was shot down early, in part due to Henry's own words. He stated that everyone involved on both sides knew of his desire to maintain both, and that he would play The Witcher for at least seven seasons, quote, as long as we can keep telling great stories which honor Sapkowski's work. Which could of course just have been words, a broken promise, but just a few weeks later, Henry announced that after meeting the new DC director James Gunn, his role as Superman was now over, leaving him seemingly infinite time. Henry was now out of his two main and most beloved roles within a matter of weeks, and the fans- I'm gonna be real. The DC Extended Universe is a joke. They're not gonna continue the storyline from the Snyder Cut. The shit is over. They did him a favor. Justice League was fucking garbage. The only one, in my opinion, that I thought was any good was Aquaman. And even that was only good because of Jason Momoa. And there was some really cool effects, etc. I think that uh, the guy that directed it was like a horror director or something. Uh, I, I don't know, man. They probably did him a favor. With more questions Wonder about Woman? what it was that actually killed the Witcher. Uh -huh. Pretty soon, however, they discovered okay. that the reason Season 2 was noticeably worse than Season 1 was exactly the reason Henry was no longer playing Geralt. In a social media post, one of the Witcher show writers took to Instagram to end speculation. Beau de Mayo said, quote, I've been on shows, namely Witcher, which some of the writers were not fans or actively disliked the books and games, even actively mocking the source material. It's a recipe for disaster and bad morale, Fandom as a litmus test checks egos and makes all the long nights worth it. You have to respect the work before you're allowed to add to its legacy. See, yes, obviously. Yes. D fucking exactly. A bold claim that showrunner Lauren responded to directly oh, in her message with, quote, don't believe everything you read. Fans uh -huh. again were given the breadcrumb trail to follow. Before Henry had even announced his departure... Well, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you read. At the end of the day, people didn't like the narrative in season two. They felt like the show was going in a direction they didn't like. So, I mean, fuck. I feel like that kind of seals the deal right there. It was clear the show was veering towards its own path, away from respecting the books. And then they even tried to do that Blood Origins bullshit. I didn't even watch that. Like, I, that came out... I saw the reviews, and I skipped it. This added testimony on social media, it was starting to make a whole lot more sense. Henry's quote about staying for at least seven seasons, remember, ended with, quote, as long as we can keep telling great stories which honor Sapkowski's work. To Henry, they were no longer respecting this work. At this point, people started to dissect old interviews from Henry mm -hmm. and saw that he was even publicly discussing how hard he'd had to fight to get certain elements of Geralt from the books into the show. Quote, This season, I really wanted to make sure that we represented the books Geralt more accurately, and that we saw him speak more. I pushed really, really hard for that, as well as... Le what is the subtext of... I had to push really hard for the main character to have more voice lines. Hmm. Doesn't sound very good to me. Yennefer is the main character. Nobody gives a fuck about her. Yet yeah, she's really hot in the game. And that's about it. It's about Geralt. That's, the, that's who the show is about. That's all there is to it. Later when he discussed some of his favorite scenes from the books being cut entirely from the season. Quote, it was such a shame a lovely bit from Blood of Elves had been left out of season two. He tried to do it justice, of course, by improvising part of that scene during the death of Roach, Geralt's horse. 
Henry doing things like this didn't seem to go down well in the writer's room. Uh. At the very beginning, they lovingly called Henry a walking witcher encyclopedia. Remember, Lauren publicly said that he was Geralt. He was born for this role. So originally, this was good. To have an actor so incredibly engrossed in his role to strive for perfection. But now that the writers wanted to veer away from well, it's, that... I, I feel like striving for perfection implies that it's like, oh, this person just wants it to be so good, they don't want to have any progress made or any deviation. But no, it, it, it's not that. It's that he just wanted it to make sense in general. ...and tell their own stories, using the books as a vehicle for their own ideas, the walking encyclopedia was now a problem. Mm -hmm. During the fan backlash, which lasted months and is probably still ongoing at this point, writers from The Witcher went on the offensive. Leaks were being published about Henry Cavill, claiming that he's, quote, toxic. Which, Misog by the way, this shit was completely unverified and bullshit, so there's nothing really worth taking consideration into. This was like, I remember I read, I, I remember reading this on stream. It's all bullshit. Misogynistic and a stereotypical yeah, gamer. Made this shit up. The claims were that Henry and the now fired yeah, writer, I, I who were this. both big fans of the games and books, were fighting to keep things true. And it was them versus the world. The world just so happened in this example to have been mostly female. They claimed that this weird alliance of two men were forcing changes on the regular and ignoring the female crew, which included writers and directors. This led to many complaints to human resources, and Henry was allegedly repeatedly warned. He ignored those warnings and continued his quote, toxic demeanor, which led to Netflix firing him, but allowing him to state he was stepping away publicly. Yeah, the again, this was completely unsubstantiated bullshit that shouldn't be taken seriously or even considered. It's in the report are quite telling. They say, quote, his extreme obsession with the game was creating an inconvenience among the crew, which goes in line with what we know about why he wanted to play Geralt in the first place, as well as the writer's public testimony stating the source material was being disrespected. Henry wanted to play Geralt as written in the book. It's inconvenient that he wants the the show to be like the thing that the show is based on. Okay. And this is what he was told when he signed on originally. Unfortunately, now they were making him play somebody completely different in a story that didn't exist. That is not what he signed up for, and he seemed to be fighting that every single day, even at the cost of his own job. The fact that the showrunners and writers were female I doubt has anything to do with anything. The Yaki's- No, that's just the, the- It's people that do that, and they just use that as an excuse. They're like, oh, you're against us because we're women, or some bullshit like that. No. He's against you because you're fucking wrong. ...dation that he's misogynistic just because they happen to be women seems incredibly convenient and relies on the idea he wouldn't have acted in the same manner had they been men instead and writing the show Ridiculous. in the same way. At this point, The Witcher Season 3 will be the last we see of Henry Cavill in a role he seemed to have been born to play. After that, the show ends for me and for many other fans. While the new actor, Liam Hemsworth, will undoubtedly do his best to respectfully play Geralt, it should be clear to all that the show is now dead. With how Season 2 deviated and how Season 3 will likely be even worse, considering Henry's alleged escalating behaviour due to said changes, yeah. displays to me that the actor change is not even the biggest problem the show faces. Without Henry fighting tooth and nail to the point of being fired in order to keep it even remotely serviceable to original fans, The Witcher without him undoubtedly is going to turn into something nobody asked for. Going down in well, history. nobody asked for Blood Origins, and how did that turn out? I mean, again, eventually people are going to run out of money trying to fund bullshit like Blood Origins and Cleopatra. I think it's already happening. People are just fucking tired of this shit. ...is yet another video game or book adaption that could have been amazing and serviced the millions of existing fans, but instead was taken over by the ego of creating something new. Rip the Witcher. It was fun while it lasted. When it comes to fans, yeah, it, is. it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Obviously. Fucking obviously.
it's just it's so crazy that somebody like that like can just get forced out of a show it is so fucking crazy some was fucked too yes a lot of people that are massively successful very talented are humble down-to-earth normal people there is this one uh fucking comparison that people did henry cavill had to keep posting about the witcher part of his contract i'm assuming so he makes like one tweet about it and there's like nothing else except for the hashtag. And then there's like some other post of like some other movie he directed with like Guy Ritchie. And he writes like a fucking book about how much fun he had. And he's talking about how great each of the other actors is that he was working with. It was just so fucking sad to see the comparison between the two things, man. It is. It fucking sucks. Yeah, he's unlucky with those roles. I know, man. Now we know which one is a good one. Yeah, exactly. Seeing the ratings completely flip between editors and audience for season one and two is funny. Orange Smith's main writer uh, doesn't want to adapt the book. She wants to use the Witcher, Witcher IP to boost her career. I think you say something similar with the Halo writers. Yes, it's like you have the easiest job in the world. You take the books and you put them on the movie. That's it. Like, it, it's just like, how do you let your ego get in the way of a billion fucking dollars? It's like the Game of Thrones guys. Remember back whenever they started? There was no ego. They just did that fucking chapter for chapter, book for book, word for word. And it worked great. And then they decided, hey, let's go a little bit off script. And then the show died. It, that's exactly what is Peter Jackson. Peter, well, there were actually a number of deviations. And again, if you want to deviate... Okay, good, but goddamn, if you fuck it up, you're gonna hear about it. There were massive deviations in Game of Thrones, yes, sure, massive. And there were massive deviations in Lord of the Rings, and I also use Fight Club as an example, massive deviations. But they were good, and that's what matters. Because if the deviations are bad, then you should have just stuck with the original shit. The only major deviation, I would say, in Lord of the Rings, other than like storytelling deviations, is the way Saruman dies. I think that's probably the biggest one. I think that the Witcher thing is such a disappointment. I loved season one of The Witcher. I thought it was incredible. I remember I watched it with Izzy and then I watched it with my mom. It was great. And, you know, things just kind of got worse after that. It's sad.